This lecture is part of Berkeley Math 115, an introductory undergraduate course on number theory, and will be about representing a number n by a binary quadratic form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared of discriminant d, which is b squared minus 4ac. Um, so this will be a continuation of last lecture, um, where we looked at some small discriminants. So last lecture we looked at discriminants minus 3, minus 4, minus 7, minus 8, minus 11, and minus 12. And what we found was that for each of these discriminants except minus 12, there was a unique form up to equivalence, and this made it rather easy to determine which primes are represented by the form. Um, <clears throat> this lecture, we're going to look at the discriminants d is um, minus 15, minus 16, minus 19, minus 20, and minus 23. And we will see that for most of these, we start getting extra complications because there's more than one reduced form. Um, so um, before doing these cases, I'll just quickly recall the results we use. First of all, we know that n is represented primitively by some form of discriminant d if and only if d is a square mod 4n. So remember, primitive means x, y, co prime. Um, and the other result we used is that any form is equivalent to a reduced form, which satisfies b is less than or equal to a, is less than or equal to c in absolute value. And you remember if b was equal to a in absolute value, or if a was equal to c, there was some other minor condition about b being at least zero, but we won't worry about that too much until it turns up. So um, let's first do the case d equals minus 15. So we want to find all reduced forms. So we've got the form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared with b squared minus 4ac is now minus 15, and we've got the reduced condition b is less than or equal to a is less than or equal to c. And you remember these two conditions for positive definite forms implied 3a squared is at most the absolute value of d. And this gives us a must be equal to 1 or 2. And if a is equal to 1, well, this condition gives us b odd. So b is equal to plus or minus 1. So we get two forms x squared plus xy plus 4y squared, and x squared minus xy plus 4y squared. And now you remember that if a and b have the same absolute value, then you can make the change of variable in order to change the sign of b. So we can sort of eliminate this one because a and b have the same absolute value. Um, now, if we look at reduced forms with a equals 2, um, again, we find b must be equal to plus or minus 1, so we get two forms, which are 2x squared plus xy plus 2y squared, and 2x squared minus xy plus 2y squared. And again, we remember that if a is equal to c, then um, we can change the sign of b and still have the forms properly equivalent. That means we sort of switch x and y and change the sign of one of them. So we can eliminate this one because a and c have the same absolute value. So we have two forms of discriminant um, minus 15. And now we see that a prime p is represented by one of these if and only if minus 15 is a square modulo 4p. And now the cases p equals 3 and 5 are kind of special because they divide the discriminant. And primes dividing the discriminant always behave in a slightly funny way. Technically speaking, they turn out to be ramified or whatever. So we're, we're mostly going to ignore the cases p equals 3 and 5. So, so you can see um, 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 uh, that if minus 15 is a square modulo 4p and p is not 3 or 5, this just says minus 15p is equal to plus 1. And now we can use the quadratic reciprocity theorem to see that this is equivalent to saying that um, 15p 
so, sorry, P15 is equal to plus 1. And this corresponds to P being congruent to 1, 2, 4, or 8, modulo 15. By the way, I should have a warning here. This does not imply that P is a quadratic residue of 15, because this is the Jacobi symbol, and the thing on the bottom is, is no longer a prime. And, and you remember when the thing on the bottom is no longer a prime, this, this doesn't necessarily mean P is a quadratic quadratic residue. In fact, if p is 2 mod 15, it's definitely not a quadratic residue of 15. So we see that p is congruent to 1, 2, 4, or 8 modulo 15, implies p is represented by either um, x squared plus xy plus 4y squared, or 2x squared plus xy plus 2y squared. And the question is, can we work out which is which is p represented by? And you can do this by using the following extra trick. What you notice is that this form here um, is always um, 0 or 1 modulo 3. And this one here is always 0 or 2 modulo 3. And we, we would, so, so if p is not 3 or 5, then we see that p must be 1 or 2 mod 3. And now we see if p is 1 mod 3, it can't be represented by this form. So p being congruent to 1 mod 3 implies p um, is of the form x squared plus xy plus 4y squared. Um, p is 1 mod 3 and, of course, it should be 1, 2, 4 or 8 mod 15. Well, if it's 1 mod 3 and 1, 2, 4 or 8 mod 15, it must be one of these two. So, so if p is 1 or 4 mod 15, it's represented by this. Similarly, if p is congruent to 2 mod 3, which implies um, since p is 1, 2, 4 or 8, it must be p is congruent to 2 or 8 mod 15, then p can be written as 2x squared plus xy plus 2y squared. So um, we've now found out which primes are represented by these two forms. Um, we can have a few examples of them. For example, um, if we take um, 2 times 3 squared plus 3 times minus 1 plus minus 1 squared, we get that's 18, 15, um, uh, hang on, that's, should, should be a factor of 2 in there, so that's 20, so that's equal to 17. And if we take 2 times 3 squared plus 3 times 1 plus 2 times 1 squared, um, we get 23. And we notice these are 2 and 8 modulo 15. So that's this form is indeed representing ones that are 2 or 8 modulo 15. Similarly, we can get some examples. Um, so 19 is 4 mod 15, so it should be represented by this form here. And indeed, we can see that 19 is equal to 1 squared plus um, um, 1 times 2 plus 4 times 2 squared. And the next one is 31, which I'll just leave for you because I don't see why I should do everything. Um, so... Um, in some sense, we, we can see that one quarter of all primes are represented by this form and one quarter of all primes are represented by this form, whereas previously we'd always found that half of all primes were represented by some form. Um, now let's do d equals minus 16. Um, and this is similar to d equals minus 12. So you remember d equals minus 12 turned out to be more or less the same as d equals minus 3 with some extra complications. And d equals minus 16 will be more or less the same as d equals minus 4. Anyway, let's find the reduced forms. So as, as usual, we have b less than root to a less than root to c and b squared minus 4ac is minus 16. So now b is even. And we have 3a squared is less than or equal to 16, so a is equal to 1 or 2. And for a equals 1, well, b must be even and at most a, so b must be equal to 0. So we get x squared plus 4y squared. If a is equal to 2, 
then you, we get b is equal to 0 or 2. But if b is equal to 2, what we're getting is that um, b squared, so 2 squared minus 4 times 2 times c is equal to minus 16. And this fails because um, this is divisible by 8, this is divisible by 8, and this isn't. So b can't be equal to 2. So we get the form um, 2x squared plus 2y squared. So now we get the result n is represented by either x squared plus 4y squared or 2x squared plus 2y squared. That's primitively. If and only if minus 16 is a square modulo n. That's the discriminant, modulo 4n, sorry. Now let's take n to be a prime and see what happens. Well, this just says... Minus 1 is a square modulo p, which is the same as p is congruent to 1 or 2 mod 4. And the prime p equals 2 um, is a special case. It's actually represented by this form. It divides minus 16, so we don't worry about it. Now, so the other case is a p congruent to 1 mod 4. And now we notice that if prime is congruent to 1 mod 4, it cannot be represented by this form because this form is always even and p is odd. So this says that if p is 1 mod 4, then p is equal to x squared plus 4y squared for some x and y. So this tells us which primes are of the form x squared plus 4y squared. However, if you think about it for a moment, this isn't a new result because if p is 1 mod 4, we know it can be written as x squared plus y squared for some x and y and one of these must be even because otherwise if they were both odd then this sum would be even so if say y is even we can write this as x squared plus y over 2 squared times 4 so we already knew that primes of the form 1 mod 4 were of the form x squared plus 4y squared so that's not a new result um, and in general um Whenever you multiply some discriminant by some square, then the forms of these two discriminants tend to be related. So, you know, discriminant minus 4 is equal to minus, is related to discriminant minus 4 times 2 squared, and it would also be somewhat related to discriminant minus 4 times 3 squared, which is discriminant minus 36, and so on. Um, so, um, now let's do the case d equals minus 20. Um, and as usual, we start off by finding the reduced forms. So we are finding a squared plus bxy plus cy squared with b squared minus 4ac is minus 20. So we see b is even. And we have 3a squared is less than or equal to minus d. So plus d. So this means that a is now equal to 1 or 2. And if A is equal to 1, as usual, we have B is equal to 1. And I'm going to ignore the case B equals minus 1 because we can get rid of it as usual. Um, sorry, B is B is even, so B must be 0. Sorry. So we get the form x squared plus 5y squared. Um, and the other case is A is equal to 2. And now B must be even and at most A, so we get B is equal to 0 or 2. And if B is equal to 0, we get 0 squared minus 4 times 2 times C is equal to minus 20, which is not possible. So B can't be 0. So B is 2, and we get the form 2x squared plus 2xy plus 3y squared. So we see that if... Um, minus 20 is a square mod 4n is equivalent to n is primitively represented by one of these. Um, and now as before, let's take n to be a prime. Um, well, in this case, um, minus 20 being a square mod 4n, and when I say n is a prime, let's take n to be a prime p, which is not equal to 2 or 5, because these are the numbers dividing the discriminant, which always cause problems. So um, this now says that minus 20 is um, a square 
modulo p, so, so the, the, the um, Legendre symbol is plus one, and um, again, by using quadratic reciprocity, this is minus five p is equal to plus one. Um, and now we've got to be a bit careful because this um, this is now three modulo four. So if p is three modulo four, then things go a bit funny. So um, this is equal to plus one um, if p is congruent to one, three, seven, or nine modulo twenty. So if p is one of these, this means p is represented by either an x squared plus 5y squared or 2x squared plus um, 2xy plus 3y squared. Now we want to know how can we separate these. Well, what we do is we can look at these modulo primes dividing the discriminant. And mod 2 doesn't give us anything terribly useful. But if we look at these mod 5, we see that this one here is always 1 or 4 mod 5, unless it's 0 mod 5. And this one is always 2 or 3 mod 5. You can see that by completing the square. So this is congruent to a square mod 5, which must be 1 or 4. And by completing the square mod 5, we see that this is congruent to 2x squared, congruent to 2 times a square modulo 5, so it must be 2 or 3 mod 5. So we find that if p is congruent to 1 or 4 mod 5 and one of these numbers mod 20, in other words, 1 or 9 mod 20, this implies p is equal to x squared plus 5y squared. And p being congruent to 3 or 7 modulo 20 implies p can be written in the form 2x squared plus 2xy plus 3y squared. Um, and we can see um, some examples of this. Um, for example, um, if we take p equals 29, this is 9 mod 20, so, so this predicts it should be writable as x squared plus um, 5y squared. Um, and um, you can see, let me see, if we take, yeah, if, if we take, um, this is 3 squared plus 5 times 2 squared. Um, and on the other hand, if um, a prime is of the form 7 mod 20, then it should be representable in this form. So we can see if we take p equals 7, this can be written as, um, let me see, 2 times minus 1 squared plus um, 2 times minus 1 times 3 plus, um, sorry, uh, I was taking, so I meant to take p it was 23 rather than 7. So 2 times minus 1 squared plus 2 times minus 1 times 3 plus 3 times 3 squared gives an example of a prime that's um, um, 3 mod 20. Um, 7 is trivial because you can just take x equals y equals 1. Um, so um, we notice something a little bit funny going on here. When, when we were looking at forms x squared plus y squared, x squared plus 2y squared, x squared plus 3y squared, and x squared plus 7y squared, and for that matter x squared plus 4y squared, these all represent about half of all primes. However, we notice that x squared plus 5y squared represents one quarter of all primes. So we have this sort of, um, you know, th th there's no obvious reason why 5 should behave differently from 1, 2, 3, 4, or 7. Um, we haven't done 6, but if, if I remember correctly, 6 also represents a quarter of all primes. So, so we get some funny changes in what's going on. Well, um, now let's look at the case p equals minus 23. So let's find the reduced forms. We have b is less than or equal to a is less than or equal to c, and b squared minus 4ac is minus 23, and as usual, 3a squared is less than or equal to the absolute value of minus 23, which gives us a is equal to 1 or 2. 
And if a is equal to 1, we have b is equal to plus or minus 1. And as usual, we ignore the case b equals minus 1 because of the same absolute value of a. And we find the form um, x squared plus xy plus 6y squared. If a is equal to 2, we find again b is equal to plus or minus 1. And now we find two forms, 2x squared plus xy plus 3y squared and 2x squared minus xy plus 3y squared. And now you may say that um, we could eliminate one of these, but we can't really if we're dealing with proper equivalents. These two forms are actually not properly equivalent. They are improperly equivalent um, because we can change x to minus x. But we can't, but they're, they're actually the first example of two forms that are improperly equivalent but not properly equivalent. However, they still represent the same numbers. You might think this doesn't matter. Um, so um, as usual, we see um, P is represented by one of these um, if and only if minus 23 is a square modulo um, 4p, which again um, um, just says minus 23p is equal to plus 1. And it's easy to see um, using quadratic reciprocity that these are just the primes that are quadratic residues of 23. And now you may think we could try and separate out these two cases by looking at some sort of congruence, mod 23. But unfortunately, this just doesn't work. You can't separate out these forms by using any congruence. And there doesn't seem to be any neat way of telling which primes are represented by this form and which primes are represented by these two forms. Um, so... Um, What's happening is, is that there are three things that can happen. First of all, there's only one equivalence class. So this is what happened when D was equal to minus 3, minus 4, minus 7, minus 19, and so on. In this case, it's really easy to tell which primes are represented by the form. Um, second case we had were things like d equals minus 15 and minus 20 where there were more than one equivalence class but they can be separated by congruences um, modulo modulo some prime dividing the discriminant thirdly um, there might be more than one equivalence class and they're hard to separate. So the first example of this is d equals minus 23. And it turns out that this is what almost always happened. These two cases only happen for a finite number of discriminants. They, 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 they happen for many of the small discriminants, but when the discriminant gets bigger, the third case um, just takes over. Um, in fact, um, Gauss actually asked for the problem of finding all um, cases in which the first case happens. Can you find all discriminants such that um, there's only one equivalence class of forms? Um, and Gauss found the cases d equals minus 3, minus 4, minus 7, minus 8, minus 11, minus 19, minus 43, minus 67, minus 163. And he calculated a lot further than that. Um, he, he did all forms up to several hundred or maybe a thousand. I don't know exactly. You know, he did a massive amount of calculation and found no other forms with, with, with only one equivalence class of forms. Um, and the, um, Gauss's conjecture was finally solved. Well, the story of who solved it is actually a little bit complicated. Um, so Hagen has sort of had a solution, but it had some possibly had minor gaps in it. It's not really clear. The first um, um, complete proof of Gauss's conjecture was by Stark, and Baker at about the same time came up with a method that reduced this to a finite amount of calculation. And Stark later very kindly pointed out that Hagen's proof was essentially complete and could easily be fixed. Um, so I just um, show 
what happens for the case minus 163. So, so let's show that if d is equal to minus 163, then all forms are equivalent. So this is a sort of rather more complicated example of the calculation. So um, we want b squared minus 4ac is minus 163, and b less than equal to a is less than equal to c as usual. And this gives us the equality 3a squared is less than or equal to 163. And now there are quite a lot of different choices of a. So um, we get naught less than a is less than or equal to 7. Um, so b has absolute value at most 7. And this means that b squared minus 4ac, um, we're using b squared equals minus 4ac is minus 163. So um, we find ac is equal to 163 plus b squared over 4. And now if we take b up to 7, um, well, we don't have to take all the b's up to 7 because we, we, we notice from this that b is odd. So b is equal to 1, 3, 5, or 7. And now this number here is equal to 41, 43, 47, or 53. And you notice, by coincidence, these are all prime. And since AC is a prime number and A is less than or equal to C, this implies that A is equal to 1. And this, in turn, implies B is equal to 1. We're ignoring the case minus 1. So the only form we get is x squared plus xy plus 41y squared. So this is the unique reduced form of discriminant um, minus 163. So as usual, we could work out which primes are represented by this if we really wanted to. Um, incidentally, um, these numbers here are given by the first few values of the expression x squared plus x plus 41, where we are setting y equal to 1. And in fact, this is, turns out to be a prime for um, 0 less than x is less than 40. It's not just a prime for the first um, four cases. It's actually a prime for the first 40 cases. And it, it turns out that whenever D is a discriminant of, of with, with only one equivalence class of form, something similar happens to this, that we get x squared plus x plus. Um, this is the discriminant, um, absolute value of the discriminant plus 1 over 4. And th this turns out to be prime for a huge number of values. Um, there are other weird things that happen when there's when there's a unique form of that discriminant. So here's a famous bizarre fact. If you take e to the pi root 163, this is equal to 262537412640768743. You may think this is the world's most boring number. Point nine 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 nine. 99925. This makes it look a lot more interesting because it's very, 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 very nearly an integer. And this turn, something like this turns out to happen whenever there's a unique equivalence class of forms with discriminant um, some number. So, um, you know, we, we showed that you know, 67 was another number. So if you take e to the pi root 67, you're going to get something very close to an integer, although it won't be quite as close as this one here. Um, so um, um, this gets into some fairly deep mathematics involving elliptic curves and something called complex multiplication. So if you want to find out more about this, you can look up co the term complex multiplication on Google or Wikipedia or something like that, which will sort of explain why this freaky coincidence is related to class numbers of binary quadratic forms. Um, OK, that's about all I want to say for the moment about positive definite forms. Um, we haven't yet said very much about indefinite forms, so next lecture I'll be giving some example of indefinite forms such as x squared minus 2y squared and trying to determine which primes can be written in this form.